We just left the town of Lexington, Massachusetts. And in the last episode, we were talking about how uh, on April 18th of 1775, uh, Gage had deployed some British regulars to, to move out to Concord to try and secure some hidden arms and ammunition that were rumored to be in this area. And we talked about how, you know, they around the, in the early morning hours of the 19th, uh, you know, Paul Revere and others had warned people in this area that the British regulars were coming. They first confront the British regulars at Lexington, and the battle that ensued there would leave uh, eight colonials dead and an additional 10 wounded. But the British continued on past Lexington to get to Concord to try and secure these arms at, at places like this place right behind me. This is the Barrett House. And what the British didn't know is that uh, there were militiamen and minutemen coming out of the woodwork and they were about to have a very bad day. Well, as I mentioned, we are standing in front of the house of James Barrett. Uh, now, in 1775, uh, James Barrett, or James Barrett's family, would have included uh, two sons and a daughter. Uh, there was also a 14-year-old enslaved boy by the name of Philip, who lived here. He would actually go on to fight in the Continental Army and uh, gain his freedom. Uh, but on the morning of April 19th of 1775, out of the 700-man British force, there would have been a detachment of about 120 that would have made their way up this road right here to search Barrett's house. Uh, so as I said, we're a couple miles west of Concord right now. Uh, the rest were the rest of the British regulars were left uh, just outside of town to secure a couple of bridges that we will get to here in a little bit. Uh, but Barrett had been placed in charge of, you know, securing cannons and firearms and ammunition and uh, dispersing them around the area. Well, when Thomas Gage was tipped off that, uh, that Barrett might have some uh, weapons here, well, that's when the British made him and his house a target. Uh, they, they were warned in enough time to, you know, get the cannon, I think there were four brass cannon, four cannon, and uh, the firearms off of the property. But uh, when the British arrived, you know, they've been uh, already in a scrap in Lexington, they've been marching all night and all day, and uh, they were tired and hungry and asked for something to drink and for something to eat, and uh, supposedly, Barrett's wife, Rebecca, who was 57 at the time, uh, replied coldly, we are commanded to feed our enemy if he hunger. Uh, they actually offered to pay her, but she refused. So one of the officers tossed a shilling into her lap, and uh, she said, this is the price of blood. Okay, so the British were getting a, a chilly reception here. And uh, they were about to find out how chilly of a reception they were going to receive back in Concord, uh, because things were about to get very kinetic over around a place called the North Bridge. Okay, so we're gonna head over there right now. So I've moved away from the Barrett House and I'm back towards Concord in an area that since the revolution has become known as the muster field. Uh, so on the morning of the 19th, uh, the, the company of uh, militia and, and Minutemen from Concord would have originally mustered up on, on the other side of Concord, but when they saw the British regulars coming, they ended up falling uh, back across the bridge and came up here to this hilltop to just kind of uh, have an observation point to watch and, and see what was going to happen. Well, as they are here, men, uh, or companies rather, from other towns like Acton and Lincoln and Bedford show up until there are about 400 men 
all here mustered up in in this field just watching and observing what is happening in Concord here along the muster field there's an old stone marker and I, I don't know when this was placed here uh, but it says on this field the Minutemen and militia formed before marching down to the fighting at the bridge so uh, again, on the morning of the 13th, you have all of these men who are standing here, watching and waiting. You've got a little bit of wind going on here. And they're looking out towards the town of Concord. So this is approximately the, the view that they would have had. Uh, I, I don't know about the vegetation. I'm assuming that, that there was less trees. But as the, the British are in Concord, they start setting fire to ammunition and uh, you know military supplies and things like that. And, and the men up here can see smoke rising from the town and they think that the British have set fire to Concord. Now in between them and Concord, there's a bridge that has 96 British regulars guarding it. And uh, according to uh, tradition, a lieutenant by the name of Joseph Hosmer uh, goes to a group of officers and he says, will you let them burn the town down? And and you have these men who are volunteering to go and dislodge the British from the bridge and, and go in to uh, Concord. And um, there's uh, another guy by the name of Captain Davis who draws his sword and says to a company, he says, I haven't a man that is afraid to go. And then he gives the word to march. Before we make our way down to the bridge, uh, I wanted to point this out. If you look here, you can see the remains of a foundation of a home that once stood here. Uh, this was the home of a Concord resident by the name of David Brown. Uh, on the morning of April 19th, uh, David Brown would have been 47 years old and was the captain of one of Concord's Minuteman companies. So the, the muster field is, is just right up there above where his house stood. And then down there in the distance is the North Bridge. So, so the British are like literally trespassing on, on his property. So this is quite personal to him. Uh, also joining Brown in this fight uh, was his oldest son, a guy by the name of Purchase. Uh, he had a cousin named John and also a nephew named Jonas who was going to be wounded in the battle. And yeah, old Brown was going to be fighting one of the most consequential battles, uh, it, not only in uh, American history, but in world history, uh, right in his front yard. So again, as I mentioned, there, there are going to be three companies of British regulars right up here defending this bridge. It's about 96 men. And originally they were deployed uh, right here on, on this side of the bridge, on the west side of the bridge. Well, when they see 400 colonials, uh, Minutemen and militia descending upon them, well, they knew that they had done messed up. Uh, so they end up retreating to the other side of the bridge. And it's here where the, the shot heard around the world is going to be fired. Here at the North Bridge, they have this monument. And uh, as you can see, it's quite busy here today, uh, which, is, which is a good thing. I've seen a lot of kids. It's good to see kids getting out here and uh, learning about the past. But here we have this, this Minuteman statue. And as you can see, uh, this man, he has his his flintlock musket in his right hand and on his left his hand is leaving the plow so he, he's a man of peace but because of the tyranny well now he is becoming a man of war so the uh, the British regulars as I mentioned had moved over to the other side of the North Bridge 
and as the militiamen and minutemen were approaching the bridge here it's generally agreed upon that the the British fired the first shot uh, the details are a little hazy but anyway uh, the Colonials return fire and that is going to be what Ralph Waldo Emerson would call the shot heard around the world in his poem Concord Hymn uh, that was read at the dedication of the memorial that you see across the bridge there and uh, anyway in that exchange uh, Captain Isaac Davis and Abner Hosmer are going to be killed I've moved over to the other side of the river uh, on the British side and uh, real quick just wanted to make mention of this home right here. Uh, this was the home to the grandfather of Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, he was a preacher here in the area of Concord. Uh, his name was um, William Emerson. And he uh, was pretty well known for criticizing the British Parliament from the pulpit and uh, became known as the Patriot Preacher. And uh, in Concord, he was in the town center just before the, the clash on the bridge here behind me. And uh, he is said to have stated, let us stand our ground. If we die, let us die here. Uh, and then later on, this place known as the Old Mance uh, played a, a pretty important role in American literature. Uh, it was from here that a lot of writers uh, kind of gathered. Ralph Waldo Emerson is thought to have wrote Nature uh, from this place. Uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne uh, also lived in this house for a short period of time. Yeah, pretty cool. We're going to wrap up our time here at Concord uh, on the, the British side of the bridge. And uh, as you can see, uh, they have a monument here. And uh, let me read it real quick. Uh, it says, here on April 19th of 1775 was made the first forcible resistance to British aggression. On the opposite bank stood the American militia. Here stood the invading army, and on this spot, the first of the enemy fell in the war of that revolution, which gave independence to these United States. And uh, you, you might be wondering, the, the British regulars who uh, had gone to the Barrett farm that I mentioned at the very beginning of this video well, what happened to them because they were they were trapped uh, over on the other side of the river it would seem well what happened is the militia uh, that was on this side of the river ended up withdrawing and it allowed the men who had been to the Barrett farm to come and cross this bridge right here but they left a few behind and if you take a look right here is the grave of the British soldiers who died right here at the North Bridge of Concord. It says, Grave of British Soldiers, and then there's a poem. It says, They came 3,000 miles and died to keep the past upon its throne. Unheard beyond the ocean tide, their English mother made her moan. Uh, April 19th, 1775. Dang, uh, that's kind of cold. Uh, but anyway, they are at rest right here near where they fell at the North Bridge. Now, when you see anything about the battles of Lexington and Concord, uh, typically, they, they kind of make brief mention of the fact that the British ended up having to uh, go on this big retreat back to Boston. But that's actually where most of the dying was going to occur for the British soldiers. There's a big run and gun fight that, that occurs between here in Concord and Boston. And uh, we're going to be tackling the battle road in the next episode. <laughs>